Good morning, everybody. It's nice to see you here uh, this morning. Uh, some are visiting their mothers here in worship. It's so nice to have you here today. If you're visiting, welcome. Uh, we have others that are going to see their children or mothers, and it's just uh, one of those uh, special days that we recognize our mothers. But most of all, we're here to worship the Lord. And um, again, welcome. Um, we're fixing to recognize the, the, gra- the graduates uh, in our church and that have been attending our church in just a moment. But before that, uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer. I want to ask Brother Paul Ease if he would come and begin us in prayer. Father, we just uh, again praise you and thank you, Lord, for the opportunity we have to be here this morning. Father, we just thank you for each one that's come out today, Lord. I just pray that you would speak uh, through Brother Edgar today what you'd have us to hear, Father. Lord, just help us to, uh, like we learned in our Sunday school lesson, Lord, to take the message with us out into the world, share it with people we know. Father, we just ask for a special blessing today, Father, on our mothers that are here in attendance with us today, Lord. I pray that you just bless them in a special way. Father, the ones, our mothers that have gone on to be with you, Father, we just ask for blessings for them also. Lord, we just again praise you for who you are, Lord, and what you do for us. We just pray for your forgiveness this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, good morning. We're... uh it's a, it is a big Sunday. Again, uh, I agree with Pastor. The, the ultimate uh, objective today is to worship the Lord and, and have him be front and center and give Christ all the glory and honor to him. But we also obviously want to honor mothers here momentarily. And then but my task, uh, we're just trying to see how many big things we can add in one day. We also have a graduation Sunday, just kind of the way the calendar worked out. Today was kind of the best day for some of our graduates. And uh, as working, both graduating from high school and graduating from college. And so that's a... How many regrets? That's a big day, too. Amen. That's a big day, too. We're thankful for our graduates, thankful for our teens, for our young people, and um, uh, want, want to recognize them at this time. Um, is Ashlyn Green, is she in here? No. No. Yes. All right. Thank you. Uh, I do know that uh, Carson and Abby are here. Could you come up here? We have some. We'd like to recognize Carson and Abby, and uh, no, I'm not uh, scrolling on my social media. I'm, I'm, I have some information on my phone, but I want to recognize uh, Carson and Abby. Um, first, let's recognize Abby. We have a gift for each one of you as well. Uh, those that come on Wednesday nights uh, and are regular on, on Wednesday nights know, uh, know Abby Young well, and she's been coming here for a long time along with Carson. It's a joy to see you two walk through and... Uh, be part of our youth group and, a, and an active part and demonstrate leadership. Uh, Abby's parents are Carla and James Young, and uh, you'll be going to NSU this fall, right? And join the summer and, and work. I know you help out with your um, fa- the family business there, but going to NSU. And how many, uh, this is one thing that blew my mind a little bit, was uh, just how much college credit hours you're going in uh, to take with you to NSU. How many is that, Abby? Forty-seven college credit hours. Oh, that's just in, incredible! And so, uh, I didn't hardly have forty-seven credit hours after four years of college, and she's she's getting that going in. So, uh, she's a bright young lady, and uh, she's been a, a really just a uh, an encouragement to Miss Michelle and I and the youth group, and uh, and so we're very thankful for um, for Miss uh, Miss Abby, and we uh, we do have something for one of those gifts down there is is, is for Miss Abby. Can we give that to her? Oh, which comes. Okay, we'll do that in just a minute. Also, standing, uh, and, and you're graduating. I'm sorry, you're graduating Pickering uh, High School, and that's on the 24th. And so, um, we're excited. Just thankful for our local graduates. Also, um, uh, Carson. We're thankful for Carson, the son of uh, Lake and Eves and Derek Lambert. Uh, had a chance to get to watch uh, Carson play a little bit of uh, baseball this year. Many of you got to watch him play baseball throughout, and. Again, as somebody that's grown up in this church, I suppose, all your life or most all your life that you can remember. Uh, but it's been a joy for Miss Michelle and I get to know you these past couple years. I uh, appreciate your leadership in the youth group and, um, 
and we're, we're going to miss, miss you so much. That's the kind of the, the double-edged sword of seniors. You, uh, you're thankful for their leadership, and you hate to see them. Um, I mean, you're glad, to see, you're glad to see them growing and taking that next step, but you hate to, hate to lose them in your youth group. But uh, Carson uh, played uh, baseball at Pickering for five years and did a wonderful job there, was a standout athlete in, um, in that. He was in Beta Club for six years. He'll graduate with... Um, just right, almost as much as uh, Miss Abby, 39 college credit hours. Again, you're going to NSU as well. Uh, plans to enjoy the summer, maybe looking for, uh, I think still looking for an internship possibly this summer of working, but also just enjoying uh, some family time. And will attend uh, NSU this fall and majoring in CIS, uh, criminal informa uh, computer information systems, and minoring in crystal cr criminal justice. Okay, majoring in computer information systems, minoring in criminal justice. So I know, um, I know both of your parents are proud and your families are proud. We're thankful for each of you. Uh, again, two core people in our youth group on Sundays and Wednesdays. And so we have a gift for each of you, but let's, uh, let's let um, Carson and Abby know how much we love and appreciate them. All right, if we could call up uh, Connor Donaldson as well. I saw him come in, Connor. Excellent, excellent. Like Carson, most of you in here, all of, most all of you in here know, uh, know Connor, and we got in, uh, we came in here after he'd already moved on from the youth group and, and great things at, at NSU. We're, we're proud of you as well, Connor. Connor is, a, uh, uh, is involved in Pi Kappa Alpha, uh, at NSU and Student, Student Government Association as well. Uh, did you graduate or you will? I know you're graduating. Is it already Friday. happened? Friday. Friday. All right. Are already done. So fantastic on that. Um, excellent. Excellent. I know mom and dad are excited about that. And um, graduated uh, uh, summa cum laude with a BS in biology. So summa cum laude is GPA is at a 3.2, 3.5. Obviously, I never got that, so I have no idea. But it's the highest one. Oh, wow. Wow, very good. Uh, excellent. Well, I, that's, that's incredible. So I, that's not an easy thing to do. So um, a BS in social science, and you're going to start uh, school at LSU Health, Shreveport, here in just a couple of weeks. Is that, is that still the plan? All right. Well, we're excited for you. Connor, a lot of accomplishments there for sure, for sure. And if you're thankful for Connor and his family, and many of you got to watch him grow up in here over the years as well, and if you'll be praying for him in this next stage of his of his life and his education. How long is that in Shreveport? How long is it pro to your program? All right. Well, if you're excited for him, be praying for him and thankful for the Donaldson family. I want you to just say amen. Let's congratulate Connor. We have a gift for you too. Right. Let's ask of the Lord's blessings on our graduates. Many of you just said you would uh, volunteer to pray. So let, let's pray right now if we can for each of these graduates at our church. Lord, we thank you so much for this day. Lord, thank you for, Lord, this is first and foremost, this is uh, the Lord's day. This is your day. Um, and we thank you for that. Let us rejoice and be glad therein. But this is also a day we've set aside to honor uh, not just mothers, but our graduates. Lord, it's whether it's high school or whether it's at the collegiate level, Lord, so much uh, time and effort and expense and um, Lord, just so much effort there, Lord, and your hand is throughout in each of these graduates' lives. We, we thank you for that. Uh, the, these three graduates uh, uh, have been an integral part of the church family here at Cooper Baptist and their families, and we're so thankful for them. Lord, we give you the praise for this, this accomplishment that you've brought in their lives. Lord, we pray for great things in the coming weeks and months ahead. Lord, not just great things in the world's eyes, Lord, but first and foremost, great things in your eyes. We pray that um, these next steps in their education, and all three of their educations, Lord, will, will lead them closer and closer to Jesus Christ. And uh, yes, it may lead them to be more and more knowledgeable and more and more academic degrees, which is fine, well, and good. Lord, we also pray these next steps in their lives, this next chapter will lead them to be more godly young men and a godly young lady. Lord, we thank you for them. Help us to uh, love on them each time they come through these church doors and to be praying for them and in between all those, all those times in between. And we give you all the glory and praise for, for Abby Young and for Carson Lambert and for um, uh, Connor 
uh, Donaldson. We thank you so much. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Start with singing Sunshine in My Soul. It's a happy day today. There's sunshine in my soul today. There is sunshine in my soul. There is music in my soul today. A carol to my King. And Jesus listening can hear the songs I cannot sing. Oh, there's sunshine, bless the sunshine when the peace happy moments roll when Jesus shows his smiling face there is sunshine in my soul there is gladness in my soul today and hope and praise and love more blessings which he gives me now for joys laid up above
spent with her uh, and, and at night we would pray together I love that I, I remember my, my other grandmother just singing Amazing Grace in French to me I grew up in South Louisiana just all those wonderful memories I, I think about my wife and God's placed her in my life just a wonderful mother to my child uh, today and I think about all the motherly figures that, that I am just so blessed to be around in this church you know, so much encouragement. You know, there, there's, there's one person I think of in particular that sends me a text almost every day to encourage me. Just so much awesome motherly figures around here 
and, and that God has blessed me with. And just, I, I'm just so thankful. And uh, thank you for, for all the mothers and motherly figures that we have around here today. We're going to finish up with Faith of Our Mothers. Faith of our mothers living still in cradle song and playtime prayer in nursery lore and fireside love thy presence still so much. We thank you for giving us this opportunity to worship this morning, Lord. Uh, we're just so thankful once again, once again today for what you've done for us and all of our many blessings, Lord. Lord, we, we're also especially thankful for our mothers today and all the motherly figures we have surrounding us right now who have just so gracefully just poured out their heart to us. Lord, I, I know I'm so thankful, Lord. And just all the, the encouragement that's found and the caring that's found and all these women that are that are around me. Lord, um, as we continue our service, Lord, we look to you right now for guidance uh, through the rest of it. Lord, uh, just be with Miss Tammy as she speaks in just a moment and hands out gifts to the mothers. Lord, be with our pastor as he just leads us in a message from your word, whatever you've laid on his heart to tell us about today. Lord, may we all grow in Christ today. And I pray all these things in the precious name of our Savior Jesus. Amen. All right, I'm going to turn things over to Miss Tammy. You guys may exit. Thank you. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it. Y'all enjoy the men's choir this morning? Yeah. Miss Tammy is one that I consider an, an outstanding motherly figure in our church, you know, a minister to, to the children and, and just all the, the love she pours out to them each and every time I've asked her to read a bit of uh, poetry to us today, and also there's gifts for all the mothers, so. Yes, Roland, I have children your age. <laughs> okay, A Hug and a Kiss by Joanna Newman. When you were born and placed in my arms, immediately you stole my heart, and I gave you your first hug and kiss. I changed your diapers, fed and bathed you. I thought there's no one sweeter than you. I gave you a hug and a kiss. I taught you how to crawl. You thought you had done it all. And I gave you a big hug and a kiss. Soon you learned to walk, then run. That's when life really got fun. And I gave you a big hug and a kiss. You started to school and thought I was old. But your, our love didn't grow old or cold. I still gave you a hug 
and a kiss. Upon high school graduation and halls of higher education, I'm still your mom, that's justification for me to give you a hug and a kiss. Jobs and marriages, babies on your own, it matters not that you are grown, you still need my hug and my kiss. Your mother may be here or far away, but if she's alive, talk to her today and thank her for the hugs and the kisses. Now you may not be young anymore, but a mother's love doesn't keep score. You can smile when you remember this. There's nothing like a mother's hug and kiss. I would like for all the children to come on up. They're going to pass all the mothers out a gift. So all the children come on up. And while they're coming, I'd like for all the mothers to stand. And if you cannot stand, just raise your hand. Right down here, Maddie. Right down there. Stand right down there. No, go down. Go down. Go stand. Okay, mothers, all, all the mothers, please stand. And if you can't stand, raise your hand. Okay, the children have something to pass out to you, so we do not want to leave anyone out. So if uh, at, at the end and you didn't get something, please let us know. Okay, if you've received uh, a gift, please sit down so we can see who, what children need to still give you a gift. And uh, Brother Eric is going to pray a special prayer for all the mothers here today and our mothers that are not here. Okay. Uh, thank you, Miss Tammy and children, uh, for preparing the, those gifts to our mothers this morning. And... Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, we do ask your blessings upon the families of our church. And Lord, we thank you for our mothers, Lord, that birthed us and loved us and cared for us and, and Lord, prays for us. And again, we just, Lord, would not know... Uh, anything, Lord, without our mothers. Uh, again, we just give you praise. And again, I pray as we look in your word this morning that you'll bless the reading of your word. And Lord, please speak uh, to us through your word this morning, I pray for your glory in Jesus' name. Amen. If you would turn with me in the Bible to Joshua chapter 24. This message this morning is still in keeping with going through the book of Joshua on Sunday mornings. And this message would uh, be geared towards the graduates and the mothers, and actually to everyone in here uh, this morning. Um, I'm not preaching a full-fledged Mother's Day uh, message this morning. You don't want me up here blubbering for 30 minutes and trying not to cry and all of that. So we're going to stay with Joshua. Um, so uh, my mother's with the Lord today and passed away just a few short years ago. And uh, I miss her. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I was a mama's boy. If you do not believe me, you could ask my daddy. And uh, I was a mama's boy and... Um, I didn't even go to school my first year. I stayed home with my mama. And um, so I skipped school the first year. So um, anyway, uh, but this is a uh, message is to all the mothers, the fathers, to the family. Please stand for the reading of God's Word this morning. Joshua chapter 24, verse 14. Now therefore fear the Lord, serve him in sincerity and in truth, and put away the gods which your father served on the other side of the river and in Egypt. Serve the Lord. And if it seems evil to you to serve the Lord, choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve, whether the gods which your father served that were on the other side of the river 
or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. So the people answered and said, Far be it from us that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods. For the Lord our God is he who brought us and our fathers up out of the land of Egypt, from the house of bondage who did those great signs in our sight and preserved us in all the way that we went and among all the people through whom we passed. And the Lord drove out from before us all the people, including the Amorites who dwelt in the land. We also will serve the Lord, for he is our God. But Joshua said to the people, You cannot serve the Lord, for he is a holy God. He is a jealous God. He will not forgive your transgressions nor your sins. If you forsake the Lord and serve foreign gods, then he will turn and do you harm and consume you after he has done you good. And the people said to Joshua, No, but we will serve the Lord. So Joshua said to the people, Your witnesses against yourselves that you have chosen the Lord for yourselves to serve him. And they said, We are witnesses. Now therefore, he said, put away the foreign gods which are among you and incline your heart to the Lord God of Israel. And the people said to Joshua, The Lord our God we will serve, and his voice we will obey. Please be seated. This morning we're looking at serving the Lord. Again, graduates... You have a choice after you leave home from mom and daddy or your whatever guardian you have at this time when you leave home, you have a choice whether you're going to serve the Lord or not. Every household in here this morning has a choice whether you're are going to just want the blessings of God but not serve Him. You have a choice whether you're going to serve idols or if you're going to serve the Lord God. You have a choice. So this morning in our text, we're going to look at how do we actually serve the Lord? How do we follow the Lord? It's here in our text this morning along with the entire book of Joshua. Again, I want to remind you, faith and obedience go together. The devils believe there's a God, but they do not obey Him. So we all have a choice. You may say you have faith, but faith without action, faith without following is a dead faith, even a demonic faith, and it says in the book of James in the New Testament. So serving the Lord, how do we serve the Lord? In verse 14, it says, now therefore fear the Lord. And that is actually the beginning of godly wisdom, is to reverence and respect the Lord God. Uh, to really recognize Him literally as the sovereign Lord over all. He is in charge whether you think He is or not. He is over all. He has all authority. He can say stop breathing to you and you would stop breathing at that very second. Our very lives, our very breath, our very being was created by Him. He is God. There's none other. There's no other. There's none beside Him, above Him. There's none even close to Him. The seraphims in heaven covers their face and their feet and they fly and they cry out, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. There is none other than Him. He is sovereign. We fear Him, we respect Him, we reverence Him because of His allness and His authority over all of His creation. Also we see in this text this morning that to serve Him, how do we serve Him? We serve Him in sincerity 
and in truth. It says, fear the Lord in verse 14, serve Him in sincerity and in truth. So what does this mean? This, this means that it is not a half-hearted commitment to serve Him. You cannot say you serve God one day and if you feel like it the next, you might serve Him. Or if you don't have something else to do, then you might serve Him on that day. No, in sincerity, it means a full commitment, a full surrender. Your whole being belongs to Him. So it's a full surrender. And in truth, how do we serve Him in truth? And we obey this. This is the truth. This is the Word of God. This is the straight line. This is the plumb bob. This is the all authority in the Christian life, the Word of God. So it's a full commitment to Him and it's in sincerity in the truth of God. This book does not lie. This book has stood true for centuries. And those who reject this truth fall on it and they fall apart. But those who believe to the saving of the soul are safe even today. Whether they have gone on or not, they're safe, they're secure in the truth of God's Word. So we serve Him in sincerity and in truth. Also, we're in this same verse, verse 14, it says, And put away the gods which your father served on the other side of the river, and in Egypt served the Lord. So we are to put away all other gods. Back then, mostly it was the same God with, the, with different names. They worship Baal, the sun god, Asherah, the sex god, and, and you can go on and on, and they just switch names. The Romans took the Greeks' gods and just named them differently. So they worship, the, the pagans worship these false gods, and God said, do not worship them. I am God Almighty, there is none other. Do not worship Baal, do not... Marry me to Baal. Don't add me to Baal. Don't add Baal to me. I am Yahweh, the covenant God, and I love you. Put away the idols. Do not serve pagan gods. So what's an idol to us? What's an idol to us? First of all, an idol cannot help you in your suffering. And you will suffer. Life is full of suffering. An idol cannot help you in temptation. Matter of fact, the idol is part of temptation. An idol cannot help you in the trials of life. You may think that idol is helping you and helping your family and, 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 and getting you some place in this life, but let me tell you something. Eternity is fast approaching. And all those things you drag your family to or you bring your family to and say, oh, we need to be part of this and part of that, and you put God Almighty to the side whatever you're bringing your family to, to actually worship, it is not going to help you. I don't care if it may help you to get a step ahead in this world. This world is going to let you down. So that's an idol. An idol cannot help you. So we are to put away those things, whatever it may be, that takes away from our relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God, and the Word of God from Genesis to Revelation, Revelation points us to the Messiah 
God in the flesh that came and died for our sins. So anything that takes from that relationship, that serving and following the Lord Jesus Christ as a disciple is an idol. And to serve the Lord is to put it away. Matter of fact, we are to lay aside every sin and wait that so easily besets us and, and run with patience and keeping our eyes on the Lord Jesus Christ the whole time. So serving the Lord, how? Number four, we are to live for Him whether anyone else serves Him or not. Look down in verse 15. Verse 15. And if it seems evil to you to serve the Lord, choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve, whether the gods which your father served that were on the other side of the river or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Whether my neighbor or not loves Jesus, I'm going to love Jesus. Whether my neighbor or my family, my mom or my daddy loves Jesus, whether they do or not, I'm going to love Jesus. I'm going to follow the Lord. No matter who else does or does not do it, I'm going to love Jesus. Whether my boss at work loves Jesus or not, I'm going to be a witness for Jesus. Whether my brothers and sisters are following Jesus or not, I'm going to follow Jesus. For me and my house, everyone under my roof is going to serve the Lord. So graduate, are you going to live for Jesus whether whatever roommate you may have in college, whether they do or not, or your classmates, every home represented in here today, are you going to love and serve Jesus, whether your friends or acquaintances or your golf buddy or fishing partner or whoever partner you may have in this life, whether they do or not, are you going to love Jesus? Are you going to let them pull you away? Oh, I don't like going to church. Them bunch of hypocrites down there. Are you going to let that keep you from loving Jesus? And by the way, I don't never get tired of saying this. Christ loved the church and gave his life for the church the ecclesia, the born-again believers, those washed by the blood of Jesus. That's who Jesus loves. And if you love Jesus, you're going to love and serve Him in His body, the bride, the church. If you don't like that, then you need to fall in love with Jesus. Do you want to serve Him or not? Whether anybody else does, your daddy or mama, they may serve foreign gods and idols and, and, and humanism and whatever it may be. Are you going to serve Jesus? Well, you just don't know what kind of life I had growing up. It doesn't matter. Jesus loves you. Give your life to Him. It doesn't matter what kind of raising you had, what kind of mom or daddy you had or did not have, you can serve Jesus today. Live for Him. As for me and my house, whether the community likes me or not, I'm going to love Jesus and serve Him. Number five, you cannot live for him in your own strength. Jump down to verse 19. I challenge you to read the whole chapter when you get home. Read the whole book. 
But look down in verse 19. But Joshua said to the people, You cannot serve the Lord, for He is a holy God. And if you jump over to the book of Judges, it proves his point. When the elders... And when Joshua dies, there rises a generation that does not know the Lord, and they do evil in His sight. And God brings judgment upon them time and time again. He'll raise up a deliverer, a judge, to deliver His people. And then when that generation dies, there's a generation that does not love the Lord. This happening. It's happening in America. One generation, you can, you know, if you compare it to church attendance, I know church attendance cannot save anybody. I know that. But my grandparents, it didn't matter if a Category 5 tornado was blowing the roof off the church. They was going to be in it. My parents and and I, I look back over, you know, when I was growing up, when my coach, my coach wouldn't have dared, but we had a tournament, and something happened that we could not play basketball on the regular night. So back then, when I was in high school, they planned a game on Wednesday night. And my coach said, we're not playing. I said, I'm not playing. So was it to win games or was it to serve the Lord and to be a witness? You see, you cannot do all of that in your own strength. You cannot live for Him in your own strength. Just like when that generation uh, grew up that did not love the Lord, it's just a little bit, a little bit drifting away. Matter of fact, if parents, if your house decides just for a little bit, I'm not talking about going on a vacation and stuff like that, but you may attend worship once a month. Unless the Lord really grabs a hold of your youngins, when they become adults, they're not going to go to church. And certainly your grandchildren won't be going. So you must decide, who do you love the most? You know, we're called to be witnesses, but the greatest witness we can be is a mama and a daddy that loves Jesus more than anything. You can't do that in your own strength. Joshua said, You cannot serve the Lord, for He is a holy God. He is a jealous God. He will not forgive your transgressions nor your sins. But the good news, folks, of the New Testament is Jesus died for our sins. And that whosoever calls upon his name shall be saved. Whoever confesses their sins before the Lord and repent before him, he will forgive you. That's the good news. So if you want to serve him, I guarantee you, if you try to do it on your own, you're not going to make it. You may say you're a Christian. You may say you, you know God and all that, but the devil does all of that. But unless you have been born again, a new creation by the blood of Christ and indwelt by the Holy Spirit and you're yielding your life to the Spirit daily, walking in the Spirit and after the Spirit and not after the flesh, you cannot live the Christian life. You may be a good person, you may be a good neighbor. You may be a, a person that, that knows a lot and, and does well in this old world. But unless you've been born again, 
not a half-hearted commitment, not something you did to maybe get ahead at work or in the community, but a full commitment, I surrender all to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Only then are you born again. You can't do it by yourself. You can't save yourself. You can't live it yourself. The very, yes, we have a choice, but God has a choice also. (laughs) You cannot be saved unless the Holy Spirit convicts your heart that you're a sinner. And the only way to know that is by the Word of God. And when the Holy Spirit convicts, by His grace we surrender, we repent, and trust in Jesus Christ. So God initiates salvation. He's sovereign, but we, our response, our choice is faith. We believe, we trust, we obey. That is our response. That is our choice. So bringing the message down to a close this morning, to serve the Lord, you have a choice. Look in verse 23 and 24. Now therefore, he said, put away the foreign gods which are among you and incline your heart to the Lord God of Israel. And the people said to Joshua, the Lord our God we will serve and his voice we will obey. Will that be your choice? That you will obey the Word of God, the Word of God says there's no other way that man can be in heaven. There is no other way that a fallen man, a fallen woman that is born and trespasses and sins, there is no other way than to be washed by the blood of the Lamb. Will you choose that? Will you serve the Lord? Will you trust in Jesus? It's your choice. So the homes represented this morning, if it has been your choice to serve the Lord and and you're here in worship and you're serving the Lord, may the Lord bless your home because it's hard. It's tough but rely on the strength of the Lord. The joy of the Lord is our strength. And anyone else, you may think you're okay by world standards, but you do not know Jesus. The Bible tells us that those without Christ, when they die, they will go to hell. And then at the last judgment, hell and death will give up the dead and you will stand before the great judge, the King of kings and Lord of lords. And at that judgment, death, hell, and hell will be cast into the lake of fire where the, where the Antichrist and the beast are already there because they had already been cast in there. And it was, it's for all eternity you have a choice to trust Christ don't serve idols don't serve the other gods serve the one true and living God that came to this world in the flesh and died for your sins trust him Follow Him. Serve Him. We're fixing to have an invitation. If you need to respond, and what I mean by that, if the Holy Spirit, not me, but if the Holy Spirit has touched your heart and you have been inclined to say, I need to trust Jesus today, I need to serve Him, will you come? I will help you in any way. This morning, would you come and and serve the Lord? Let us pray.
Lord, we thank you again for your precious word. And, and Lord, I thank you for every home here today, the mothers and, Lord, the, the families. We thank you so much for each and every one. Lord, I ask your blessings upon their children and grandchildren, Lord. But Lord, we thank you for the convicting power of your Holy Spirit. And Lord, you're so loving that you will touch hearts even at this very moment that needs to place their faith in the one loving Lord Jesus. So Lord, help us now. Help us. We can't do nothing in our own strength. But Lord, we trust in you to move. And we will give you the praise. In the name of our Savior Jesus, we ask this. Amen. I want to ask you to stand. If you want to trust Jesus this morning, please come. I'll help you in any way I can. Please come right now. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saves a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found, was blind, but now I see twas grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace my fears relieved. How precious did that grace appear. The hour I first believed Through many dangers, toils, and snares I have already come Tis grace hath brought me save thus far and grace will lead me home the Lord has promised good to me his word my home secures he will my shield and portion be as long as life endures. Yea, when this flesh and heart shall fail and mortal life shall cease I shall possess within the veil a life of joy and peace